Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. This is a coding challenge about recursion. Uh, recursion is a technique. It is actually a concept about self-reference. A recursive function is a function that is defined according to itself. This is what I'm going to do in this coding challenge. What does that even mean? But um, the reason why I want to show you recursion is it's a key concept behind the fractal geometry of nature. So I have here Benoit Mandelbrot's seminal book on fractals, The Fractal Geometry of Nature. I have it's a wonderful book. I encourage you to, um, if you're interested in this subject, it's, it's, the, it's the beginning of everything in terms of this subject. Um, so I encourage you to take a uh, to get it for yourself or borrow it from the library. Um, and I have a lot of other videos. You can, I'll link to them in this video's description I, where I made fractal trees, uh, nature of code, tutorials about fractals. Fractals being a self-similar shape, a shape that's kind of made up of itself. Recursion is this concept of self-reference. A recursive function is a function defined according to itself. So it, it's a really elegant way of creating patterns. I, uh, um, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to make a really simple one. It's just basically the, I'm going to build the example that's been in processing for many years or something like it from scratch. And then you, I've been so enamored with the previous 10 print coding challenge, which is just a simple bit of code and what people made from it. So I'm hoping that the same thing is going to happen. I don't know what the hashtag should be. Hashtag coding trained recursion. I don't know, some people come up with something better. 10 print, I would say recursion, but that's maybe just recursion. I don't know. The point is, uh, uh, share all the things you make on Twitter and also in the readme file that'll be uh, on GitHub, link from this video's description. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start with some really simple code. I have a sketch which makes a canvas that's 600 by 400. I am just going to draw in the middle of the canvas an ellipse. And it's gonna be at 300 comma 200, and it's going to be 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. I always forget this, but with ellipse, if the width and height are equal, I can just use one uh, argument. And there it is. Ah, now one thing I want to do about this is I want to say uh, stroke 255 and no fill. So let's say, for the sake of argument, what I want now is to repeat this pattern. I want this ellipse, then another ellipse, then another ellipse, then another ellipse, and they're shrinking as they move off to the right. Well, the typical way that I would do that is with a loop structure, a while loop or a for loop. This is a control structure that allows you to repeat code, like draw an ellipse, and change what's happening each cycle through the repeat. But I'm going to do it in a different way. Recursion is much, a, recursion, a recursive function executes with a loop unto itself, but in a slightly different way. So let me keep going with this. And I'm going to say, what if I wrote a function, almost absurdly, just called draw circle? And that function, I just put this ellipse in it. And what I said is, let me give it an x, a y, and a diameter. And so I'm going to draw the ellipse at an x, y diameter, diameter. And then I'm going to say, call, say draw circle at 300, 200, 300. So this is like a totally like absurd thing that I've done. The code runs exactly the same. Right? This is the same. What I've done is basically redefine the ellipse function and give it a different name and then call that. So this seems kind of ridiculous, but there's a reason why I'm doing that. What would happen now? Just bear with me for a second. What would happen if right in here I said, hey, draw another circle at x plus, I don't know, 20 y d. So this is now this idea of recursion. I'm defining draw circle according to itself. So when I execute draw circle, it draws an ellipse, then calls itself. So it draws an ellipse, then calls itself. So it draws an ellipse, then calls itself. So it draws an ellipse, then calls itself. I'm gonna stop this eventually. Draws an ellipse, then calls itself. This could result in an infinite loop. So I need some way, just like with a for loop or a while loop, I need to make sure I have an exit condition. So if this function is gonna recursively, and, and you know, this probably looks like something you're not supposed to do, right? You can't call the function from inside the function. But in fact, this is a technique that happens in many algorithms require this kind of recursive thinking. What I'm doing right now does not require this cursive, recursive thinking. I could probably do this more easily in a for loop. But in a moment, I'm gonna do something else that a for loop wouldn't really work as well for. So, here we go. I'm going to give myself an exit. Weirdly, let's just see what happens. So I crash my browser. Eh, you know what? So what happened is I got this error. Fortunately, the browser was like smart enough to say like, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey there, buddy. You are calling yourself way too much stuff. So it, it's a maximum call stack size exceeded and blah, blah, blah. Like draw circle, draw circle, draw circle. This is bad. So it stopped. But you can see I did have 
this result of it doing itself over and over again. So I could add an exit condition and, and say, well, only actually, only actually call yourself if x is less than width. So as, if, if x is changing, right? So keep going until you get to the edge. And now I could do this again, and there's, it stopped, right? But this is not what I want to do, actually. What I want to do, I want to move, but I also want to shrink the diameter. So with each new ellipse, I want the diameter to shrink. So we can see that's happening here. The diameter shrinks by half. And I also want to do something where I move it according to uh, half of the diameter. So, um, so now I'm moving each ellipse over according to the radius and shrinking, which is half the diameter, and shrinking it by half. So there we go. Oh, and I got the, <laughs> so I got the call thing. So now I need to use as long, keep doing this as long as D is greater than two. Whoops. Uh, as long as D is greater than two, not less than. So there we go. So now we see I have this ellipse that's moving to the right, that's moving to the right, that's moving to the right. Now let's think about this for a second. So what I have, remember, what I have is an ellipse with a smaller one and a smaller one and a smaller one and a smaller one. That's what I have. Now you might think, well, what if I want to also have the ellipses going to the left? So I could pretty easily do that. And I could have two for loops or one for loop that kind of grows and shrinks. But what if what I really want is to say, this is not an ellipse, a circle, with circles to the right and the left. What it means to be a circle is to have a circle to the right and the left. So this circle also needs a circle to the right and the left. But then this one needs one to the right and the left. Oh, and this one needs to the right and the left. And this one needs to the right and the left. Right and the left. Right and left. Oh, but this one's right and left. This goes on forever. This is this idea of recursion, a fractal, a self-similar shape. If I zoom in on any given portion, it's going to look like the whole, the whole shape itself. This is a perfectly self-similar fractal where uh, every piece of it is exactly the same. But one thing you could think about, you could build a little randomness into here, and that's actually referred to as a stochastic fractal. And something like lightning would be that. If you look at lightning, right, it's kind of all this like our, our blood vessels or trees, but not every piece of it is exactly the same, but the kind of idea of it is the same. So anyway, I'm off on a little tangent there. Let's actually make, I wanted this to make this happen. So let me come back in here. So now, right, this is what I have. And so now what I can do, right, is I can say, hey, why don't you not only draw a circle to the right and to the left? Now I, 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 I double dog dairy with the cherry on top and some non-dairy whip cream, low fat, not low fat, you're not supposed to do low fat anymore. Anyway, I dare you to try to recreate what I'm just gonna show you right now without recursion. Somebody will do it and I'll, my mind will like explode. But it's, this, is the, this is just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code that's gonna do something kind of phenomenal. There we go. So this is the result, right? It's not just circles to the right and left, but it's circles, look at this, zoom in, that looks just like what I drew. Zoom in. This looks just like what I did. Now I'm zooming using the zoom feature of the Mac. I'm using a Mac. Um, but um, could you actually draw, zoom, use scale or some other kind of trickery to like do this sort of like infinite zoom into the fractal? Could you animate this? Don't draw circles. Use color. There are so many possible things you could expand on from here. You know, just to like keep going for another minute or two. Uh, I could do them also, oh, I could say, hey, put some circles down, right? Y plus D times 0 0.5. And let me make the, um, the canvas a little bit bigger. And look at this. Now, what's crazy about this is, oh my God, I can't believe this just happened. <laughs> this is actually called the Sierpinski Triangle, which formed out of all these circles, which is a triangle filled with other triangles, filled with other triangles, filled with other triangles. That's a fractal you could try to make. I mean, I made it in this sort of weird roundabout way by putting all these things next to each other. So what if I have them go up? Uh, what if I have them only go to the right and down? Like, uh, this is like, now I'm just too curious. Uh, I'm going to take out to the left. So this is to the, whoa, that's kind of, whoa, it's like the fractal thing on its side. There are so many possibilities here. Um, so and I, I want to think though, like, so a couple things. One is this is now executing over and over again, but I'm not doing anything to animate it. Um, you know, I could kind of like give the initial size to like mouse X. So you can see it's kind of like I'm 
zooming in and out in a way, uh, and interestingly enough. But so, so there's, a, um, there's a lot of things I could do to animate, but I'm going to add no loop right now because I also want to show you, you know, if I were to add just a little bit of randomness into this, let me go back to the original one. But for example, what if I said uh, let new d, and did I use var? No, I didn't have, I don't have any variables yet. <laughs> let new d equals d times random, you know, 0.2 to 0 0.8. And so now I'm going to say plus new d divided by 2. So I could use, put some randomness in here. I don't know what this is going to do. This is probably a bad idea for some reason I can't think of just yet. Um, and you can see, I don't know that. So this wasn't, I don't love what I got, came up with here. <laughs> but, you know, every time I do this, it's going to give me a slightly different version of it. It's not perfectly, this is a stochastic fractal, the quality of how the shape is repeating itself similar. Um, and someone's telling me to do D times 0.25 in the chat, maybe that's going to create a more interesting pattern. Um, but this, so, I, and again, I have discovered from doing the 10 print coding challenge that the viewership of these videos is way more creative and has so many beautiful design ideas than I do. So I really just need to stop because I don't have any of those ideas, but I'm trying to show you some possibilities here. So I am going to just do one other thing, which is I'm going to take this and make this a 0 0.25, which somebody in the chat was telling me to do. Oh yeah. So that's kind of cool. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me make the first circle bigger. Oh, but maybe I need to, uh, Oh, but now I don't want to go over by divided by two. No? Yeah, so that's interesting. Oh, I make crazy weird recursive eyes. <laughs> anyway, see, I'm terrible at this. So have fun. Make some parameters. Make some color choices. Make some design choices. Share with me on Twitter, hashtag recursion coding train. <laughs> so somebody, I'll pin a comment for what the, somebody will come up with a good hashtag idea and I'll pin it to the top of the comments. And um, also uh, contribute to the readme and I'll show a bunch of people's recursive designs on next week's uh, coding train, which will be next week. Okay, talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>